Okay, so we are gonna start by the first thing is that we are gonna obviously open MATLAB. Close some of the windows that I have here open from previous scans, just because I don't need them. Let's just open up this. Okay, so the only thing that you see here, we have clear a uh, workspace. I clear also my window, my common window. I have all of the programs that I need here in the folder. And in the same folder, I'm gonna copy the uh, data points that uh, were extracted from the scan, which is extension ASC, as you see here. So we are gonna copy the file with the same current folder here, and we are gonna run uh, what I call here the program fix plot now, plot two. So I'm gonna switch to the, the folder, the local folder where I copy the scans. So here is are in this folder. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna copy. I'm gonna open the, the shell three uh, block sixteen. So I'm going to results and as you see, I have the ASC files. So I'm gonna control C copy. I'm gonna come here and control D paste. And I'm obviously I'm gonna replace because that was the previous one that I scanned. Okay. So the first step is import this data to MATLAB and there are automatic ways to do it. I'm just doing manually because sometimes it makes some problems. So I'm just click right click import data. <clears throat> and obviously this is a lar large text. So depending on the computer that you're working, it's gonna take more time. So as you see here, the first uh, is like uh, just text. So it started from here. So it already selected some text, and as you see, it's a lot of data points, and it went through the end. But as you see, the end is also a text. So if I imported all of that, it's going to import number and text, and it's going to take a while to import. Uh, but I just want the, the data, the numbers. So what I do usually is I just remove the last row, which is you know this one, it ended in sixty-three. So I'm, as you see here, the range row from the second row to the this number. 63, so I'm gonna reduce one row, 62. So now you see they are selected from two to these rows. So I'm not selecting any uh, any text, okay? And if for some reason you just click in somewhere, you can just also manually select it then, right? So you can, for example, select this couple here. I'm gonna scroll all the way down and I'm gonna click shift. So shift is down and click right, uh, right click here, uh, left click, sorry. So you see again, they are selected. And I'm gonna save them that like data, enter, that's the name that I'm gonna give it. And I'm gonna save it like a numerical matrix, okay? Numerical matrix there. And now I'm gonna import the data, import. Scanning. Okay, so. Oh, you see all of the data was imported to the workspace. So now I have this one here. Now I'm gonna open the fixed plot number two code. So they have different sections and I'm gonna start by the first section by one one. So I'm not gonna run the whole program, I'm gonna go by sections just because it's different steps here that needs to be manually addressed. So the first section is this one is just plotting all of the plots that I have here, nothing major, so just run it. And as you see, it's all of the data points plot in a X, Y, Z plot. So I can take this uh, rotation, rotate 3D tool, and I can actually rotate my data points. So you'll see the different data points. So the first thing that you see, there is our orientation, as you, as you can see here, where I can just see the profile of this shell. So I'm gonna select that profile. And see, this is a play a little bit manu manually with the, with the mouse. And you can go up and down, left and right. But the idea is to select the best angle where you just have perfectly, you know, perfect vertical here. And additionally, I'm going to select a plane where these plots are in the same plane because that should be the base, right? So this, I'm going to select an angle where those are at the same, approximately the same, uh, at the same uh, plane. And this one also like at the same plane. So I'm going to rotate a little bit more. 
I guess that's the best one. Let's see, there are the best plane here and the best plane here. So I'm going to select these uh, data points like a reference and I'm going to draw a plane here. So I'm going to select this tool, select brush, and I'm going to create a window here, just carrying a couple of these data points. Right click, export brush, and I'm going to create a variable called points points, uh, plural, okay. So you see points, so it basically are the uh, coordinates of all of these points that I selected here, Mike, okay. So after I selected that, I'm gonna come to this ne next section here of my code, and I'm gonna run this section. So basically what it's gonna do is I'm gonna, it's gonna take these pl plates, these, these data points that I selected and create a, a plane in those. So that's basically going to be my base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate all of the data points according to this plane and put it then horizontally, and that's the next section of the code. Obviously, I need to, you know, review that that plane cross the points that I selected because if that the plane is doing a funny thing, probably the select the point that I selected weren't right, so I need to redo it. So just select another point, right click, and create another point here. So you know you need to verify that the points are. The, the points that I selected are crossing the automatic plane that was drawn there. So I see that the planes are, you know, the plane is fine, so everything is okay. So I'm gonna go to the next section, the next section, and basically what it's gonna do is rotate. So now if I run it, as you see here, now the plane that I was created there, now it's in horizontal this fashion. So they are not oriented anymore like that. Okay. So that's the next step. Now, as you see here, there are, if I right click, I selected this uh, 3D rotation, right click. And I'm gonna go to X, uh, XZ view. So as you see here, we have a vertical view of the, of the shell. And basically you can see that some of the points, you know, are basically the, the clay that we are putting to place the, the shell at points that I'm not interested of. So I'm gonna say, okay, that looks like it's around 17. So I'm gonna say that 17 and above are the ones that are interested. So I'm gonna run this code here. And, as, and I'm gonna run it and I'm gonna go again to X and Y, right click, select these two, XZ. So now you see that I'm, not, I'm, I'm removing all of the points below 17, right? If I'm not happy with that, I can change this number. So if I can close this uh, window and I, for example, I wanna put five, run again this section. <clears throat> and now we are gonna, uh, they are gonna show more points because as we saw in the previous window, you know, if I start five, I'm starting taking some point of the clay. But some points are not interested. So I'm gonna close again. And I'm gonna say 17 because the 17 looks that I was okay. 17, run. <clears throat> so now I filter in the, the, the lower points, so it looks fine. So now I'm gonna go manually to the X and Y plane. X and Y, you know, that's the next section. So I'm gonna come to the last view and I'm gonna select the rotation, right click. <clears throat> Right now. And I'm going to take X and Y. So as you see, basically they are rotated in this way. So I'm going to play, I'm going to put my data in, in the X axis in this orientation. So I need to rotate this one in this angle. So counterclockwise is negative in this particular <coughs> plot and clockwise this way is going to be positive. <coughs> So I'm putting a here, here 42, as you see here, 42. This is the angle that I'm gonna rotate in degrees <clears throat> and to see if I can place it in this orientation. And this is gonna be just a guess. So I'm just gonna run this section. <clears throat> uh, they created in another plot, so I need to go again. That's why. So as you see, basically, if I take the, the zoom in, <clears throat> actually this guess was really good. See, they are really horizontal, uh, flat. For example, if I put another angle, let's see uh, uh, 35 or 30. <clears throat> if I run the, in the code, it's creating this plane. So it rotated from 
whatever it was here to this angle, and they are not perfectly horizontal. And I can actually go to plot browser, <clears throat> and I can just hide, you know, the other points here. So it seems that this is not enough. Uh, 47, uh, the 47 looks like pretty good. So I'm gonna go to my code here again, and I take 47. And it looks a little fast. So I'm gonna put just 46. Okay, so this is a manual, just play, run. Oh, too much, sorry. So it's gonna be 45 actually. Right. Ah, no, it was 43, 43. Forty. Now forty. It was forty. So you see, I, I can I can select them. this one. Looks really horizontal. So I'm gonna leave this last one. It was angle of forty. So I'm gonna leave this angle that. But now I'm gonna go to the plane X and Z. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna deselect this one because if I have deselected, these tools are not gonna show up. So I'm gonna deselect and select again the 3D and right click. <coughs> right click. <coughs> and XZ plane. So I'm gonna go zoom out a little bit. So as you see, they are a little inclined in this way. So I can rotate it in the in the in this plane, you know. So I, I want to rotate in this case a little bit negative to go in this direction, and probably a couple degrees, five degrees, I guess is gonna be fine. And again, this is a, a try and error. So I'm gonna come here to this section and I'm gonna type minus five and run it. So now you see <coughs> it created a rotated plane, but I rotated too much, right? So I'm gonna do so minus three. So it looks fine. So it looks more horizontal, better than this. It looks still too much though. So I'm gonna go minus two. Okay, minus two. So it looks much better. So I rotated in this direction manually, X, Z, and it rotated in uh, X, Y manually. So now I'm just consolidating in the next uh, section, all of the rotations that I did run in this code and it's gonna plot in a new figure called figure number 10. So everything is gonna be consolidated in this figure. So run, so it's gonna apply all of the rotations and it's gonna create a new figure. <clears throat> okay, now finally the plot is here. So figure number 10. And uh, I can go to the different angles. So I can select the 3D rotation, right click, and X and Z. So I can see this angle here, and I can I can see the other angle. So you see it's roughly vertical. I can see from the top, it's oriented this way. So I can select that one. And I'm gonna select like a useful data again, right? So in this final code, I'm gonna quantify the thickness. So I'm gonna select a range of Z values and I'm gonna select the values of X values in this, you know, uh, loops. So this K is the Z value. And actually I'm gonna put here a note, so C. And this one is the X value. So again, I'm gonna come to my plot and select uh, X and Z, right? And if I go to plot browser, and also plot editor, I'm gonna be able to have more options here, right? So I'm gonna select the X axis and I have the X axis here uh, range. So I'm, I'm gonna just filter a little bit on, from zero you know, to, for example, 70. So that's probably less, you know, 70, 60. So actually 50. So I can change from five to 50, 
And as you see from five to 50 is enough to see all of the width of the shell. So I can just save time and I put here from five to 50. So it's gonna scan from five, coordinate five to 50, okay? So it's just a manual process. Same in Z. So in Z, you see, this is the axis in Z. So I don't want to scan all of these pieces from the bottom. So I can change Z here and it's not gonna be from zero. Probably it's gonna be from, as I said, 17 before. And from 17, I have like perfectly fine here and it could go to 70 or to 80 or whatever top, right? But I'm covering the whole height of the shell. So I'm gonna select here from 17 to 70. I can change obviously those numbers. <clears throat> so those are the numbers that are okay with for me, you know, according to the drawing that I have. Obviously that can change depending on the position that you scan the, the shell. So now I'm gonna run this section of the code and basically it's gonna go through the different sections and calculate the thickness. So it's gonna take some time, couple of minutes, two or three minutes. So I'm gonna run this code and I'm gonna pause the video and we'll come back in a minute. Okay, so finally it took like three or four minutes. <clears throat> Uh, depending on the computer, it could take longer or shorter, right? But that's the plot that gave me. So as you see, basically, is the plot of the same filtering that I put here from the coordinates that I placed. And basically, it's taking all of the points and trying to calculate the thickness of the shell based in the measurements from one uh, side and the other. And this is the result. So basically, this is a color map. This is a 2D, you know, C and X in this direction. And this is the thickness here. So I'm going to change a little bit the options here to see much better. So I'm going to right click in this uh, color uh, uh, ruler and the location, uh, sorry, the standard uh, color map, I'm going to change to turbo. So it's going to highlight the thicker in red and the lowest in blue or the thinner. Now, the other thing is you see that going from whatever number here to probably I don't know, 17, 1.8 or something. So what I'm doing, because I know that the shells are not gonna be thicker than 1.5 or so, I'm gonna change those limits and I'm going here to open color editor. <coughs> it's gonna open the options of this shell. And here in set color map limits, I'm gonna change the minimum at zero maximum at 1.5, in this case of 1.8, So I'm gonna close this one. So I'm going through zero to 1.5. So zero will be zero thickness, 1.5 is maximum. I can also change the zero, you know, I know that it's not gonna be zero. I'm just gonna leave it there for now. But you see here, there are some high points that basically could be the border. And if you see a distribution of thickness here is, is like shorter, probably around 0.4, here green around 0.8, here is like kind of reddish around here, 1.2 or something like that. So you, you, you have a nice picture of that. So that's it. So right now it's interesting to save that point. And if you click it there, it's indicating the coordinates. So I'm gonna go to save as, and, uh, and this is actually the shell 316. So I'm gonna save it like a shell 316 and I'm saving as a my dad figure, save. So now it's safe. So next time that I open my lab, I can open this plot and it's gonna display like this one. So I'm not gonna lose it. So I can close now. So I can close all of my graphs. I don't need it anymore. And the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to the, I, as I see, as you see, I, I created a bunch of variables that I'm not using anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save two variables that could be important later for, you know, if I want to rerun again something. So I'm going to, I'm going to save the data, which is the whole data points, and also the one called tick metrics, which is basically uh, the results that I obtain. So I click in this one, uh, shift click in the tick metrics. So I have these two selected, right click, um, save us. And I'm gonna save this in the in name here. I'm just naming my lab at 3.16 because it's the shell 316, save. So now I'm saving in the hard drive, 316. So now the next time that I open my lab, you know, all of these are gonna be gone. So I can double click on that and I, I have this data available. So that's the last thing. Finally, I can just clean all of that because I don't need it. 
actually I, I also can clean the the common window for cleaning the common window is the command C, C L C. So it's cleaning the common window if I have you know whatever here is cleaning. And the next is cleaning all of the variables. I don't need any any of that to be confusing for the next run. So I'm gonna clear 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 all. So it's basically clear all of the variables. Enter so it's raising it because everything is already safe. So that's it. So next is continue with the next shell. Just copy here and keep going again. <laughs>